and welcome to Taraji Eco Farm. Uh, we have a, a couple of lessons we've learned uh, from our farming. We started uh, like a year ago with different things, chicken, ducks, and then we added as we progressed uh, from guinea fowls to goats to turkeys and then the rabbits. So I'll take you through the different animals that we have on the farm and the lessons that we've learned. We have four rabbits. Uh, we bought in the first two which was this one. This was the biggest female that we had. And then we had the other two small ones, the big male. This one, this was our first time doing rabbit farming. And this one was pregnant and we didn't know. So we should have separated it if we are, once we had discovered it was pregnant. But uh, two weeks ago, it gave uh, birth to six kittens and it ate all of them because we had actually not prepared proper housing for them and where it's going to lay its kittens and uh, for privacy. So the next time you're going to be quite careful on that. We know that once it gets pregnant, at a certain stage we need to separate from the rest so it can have privacy and uh, be comfortable uh, giving birth to the kids. This was our second rabbit. It came in while it was quite young. It was sick. It had uh, like scabs all over its face. So we had to go get treatment for it. We had to do an injection and then remove the scabs physically and apply some uh, disinfectant to them to clean them. Now you can see it's doing quite well. And also on the farm we have turkeys. We have three sets of turkeys. We have the adults, which uh, we first bought three of them, one male and two females. That we show you after this. These are like the teenagers. These are the first ones to be given uh, to be uh, hatched, and they're about now four, five, five months, five and a half months old. We have uh, seven males and six females. Now, uh, what we learned from the turkey is that they get sick quite fast, especially when mixed with uh, chicken and ducks. So when they, they are first hatched, in fact, what happened is the mother laid 17 eggs. So we gave a chicken uh, uh, nine of them to hatch, and the mother hatched the, the six eggs. So after that, we had uh, 15, 15, of, of 15 young, young ones, and among those, we lost two. One to disease, no, actually, two of them to disease. So we've kept on treating them uh, using local means. And because we are doing lot, we are, we are doing pure organic farming. We are avoiding giving a lot of drugs. We didn't even give vaccinations once they are born. We just gave them multivitamins and fed them, and then separate them from the other from the other flock. And you can see they've done quite well for first time farmers. We we'll show the other seeds. We have young ones, and then we have the older ones. This was our first female goat on the farm. Actually, bought it when it had a young one, which is a male that is not here at the moment. And this goat, we bought it from a uh, pastoralist, somewhere in Korea, uh, in Migori, from a market. And we didn't know it was, it was used to this climate uh, where we brought it. And it's been sick for a while. Um, we had to keep on treating it from worms. And then finally, uh, a few weeks ago, the vet came and told us that he had some fungal infection that it, it had carried on for so long. That's why now you are feeding it here. Usually we take it outside to the field to graze, like the other animals. But the vet advised us because we don't want to get sick from stepping or eating grass that has, has droppings from dogs and all that. So we keep it here and we do zero grazing for it in the farm. And it also gave birth to another uh, a kid, three weeks old now, and she's doing quite well. And so, uh, so we also learned from goat farming, the, the, as you take it out to feed, you have to make sure you take it to safe places where dogs don't do droppings or other animals don't uh, graze there a lot because there are a lot of infections that you can get from the grass that's eating out there. So now we are going to keep it here for foreseeable future and we'll bring food to reach uh, inside here to avoid any the infections. Even the vet told us that this goat is capable of getting two or three kids if it's taken care of very well. So that's why we are trying. This time around we are going to take care of it properly. We'll give it salt. We'll also give it some commercial feed sometime. Uh, so that we see whether we are going to get the maximum kids it can get. We have a star turkey. 
is actually the best uh, uh, duck on the farm, even among the chicken and the ducks. We bought it in July of last year, and uh, since that July, it's given us 15, the ones I just saw you, show you, showed you, 15 turkeys, and then recently, these ones are two weeks old, it gave us, they're actually 11, but we lost three. We lost three one, uh, to purely physical injuries and one to disease. And that's why they are separated here. We also learned that uh, initially we thought the turkey cannot sit on its own. It's more than five, six eggs. But this one sat on 11, on 13 eggs and gave us 11, uh, 11 uh, chicks. And you can see, so the turkeys can actually, even if it lays 17, this one lays, the person lays 17 eggs and they got 15 out of it. This time it laid 13 eggs and they got 11. So the turkey can actually sit, control sit on all, all its eggs, so long as it's in a safe place, safe dark place, can sit on all, all its eggs and actually hatch all of them. And we're actually keeping it here instead of where the main poultry farm is because of safety for the young ones. Uh, because we, also, we have ducks that carry diseases. We learned that turkeys are very susceptible to diseases. Coxidiosis, there's a uh, avian fox, I think, and other diseases. In fact, uh, the first time brought turkeys on the farm, we lost one the next day brought it because we mixed it with the chicken. The turkey the next day the turkey was very dull, feathers dropped, not eating, not drinking, and within two days we had lost it. So now we, we prefer separating the young one, ones until they develop some immunity and then later on you can join them with the rest. But initially you have, turkeys you have separated them from chicken. Uh, they are very susceptible to diseases. Now we have a uh, three week old guinea foals that were hatched by a chicken. Guinea foals are one of the easiest and I think and the best uh, type of poultry to rear. We've never experienced any diseases from the for the for the guinea foals. Right from the three sets of guinea foals that we've uh, hatched on this on the on the farm. They're very good eaters and in the second week they will develop their feathers so they can easily stay by themselves. This one saw with the chicken that hatched them for two weeks. Then we remove the chicken and you can see they've been staying together by themselves for a while. They can eat, drink and their feathers are developing quite well. Guinea foals do not experience diseases if their place is kept clean and hygienic. This is our main poultry farm. Unfortunately today the person who, is, who actually cleans is not around, so you can see it's quite dirty, but they'll be clean by the end of the day. So over here we have the turkeys. Over here we have the turkeys. We have the guinea foals. Six guinea, no, actually I have nine guinea foals. We have 14 ducks and several chicken. They all, they all eat together and they sleep in different uh, housing over here. What we've done is, the first thing we did is biosecurity. As you can see, we fenced all around with chain link and then chicken wire to avoid any predators coming in and then we so the lesson learned is um, first of all we have the one of the tag the white turkey over here that you can see this white one been here for the almost six months, five months too. We started laying eggs, actually laying four eggs, but it had difficulty in laying its eggs. It took like two hours for it to lay eggs, and then it stopped suddenly. So we are trying to figure out how to get it back to laying eggs. Uh, but then we also realized that we, you, 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 sometimes you need to assist it to lay its eggs, because it used to lay big eggs and they were bloody. So it's been a lot of difficulty in laying eggs. We are trying to solve that. We have guinea foals here. Our parents stock. Oh. This is our parents stock. We used to be five. But we've, we've uh, taken two out. Mm -hmm. okay. This one has the six ones that you see out here. That have been laying eggs for the last few months too. Guinea foals are usually generally uh, very reliable on uh, poultry because they don't get sick at all, not expend diseases for and they eat any, everything that the chicken eats and the other uh, animals eat. So you can actually even mix them with chicken in the same house or the ducks in the same house.
The biggest lesson learned is from ducks. Ducks need a very safe place for them to either lay their eggs. They need privacy a lot to lay their eggs and to lie on the eggs and hatch eventually or brood the eggs. So essentially here we've not had eggs from the ducks for the last uh, maybe six months or so. But we are trying to construct a new place for them here, purely that. Then we put somewhere where they can wash, they can bath outside here. And then we put laying uh, places where they can lay their eggs privately full time. So the ducks will not be mixed with any other poultry in the farm. Because we've learned that if you mix them together, they've got no privacy, they're not going to lay eggs. They don't feel safe at all. It's not going to happen. So we're working on that. As you can see, bent ducks are also very defensive. So you can actually keep it for security. And no person is going to, no person is going to come in here. They can actually fight with anyone on the farm. So they're also good for security. These were initially the first houses we started with poultry uh, as new farmers. But we're planning to improve and build better housing for all of them. You can see it's not perfect. We're supposed to put uh, chicken oil below so that the droppings can drop down. But we put uh, off cuts for wood. So our next chapter now is to construct a proper housing for all the poultry behind here. That is, we can able to keep clean and also put uh, concrete below so they don't dig like that and it looks quite messy. So housing is probably uh, also one of the biggest lessons that we've learned that we need to do a proper, a proper job for housing for the poultry. You can see we, are, we collect our eggs from the ground because we don't put proper laying nests in the housing, in the houses of the chicken. So we just drop down. I just collected a chicken egg. You can see these are two guinea fold eggs that we just collected from the ground. Sometimes the chicken eats, they are able to eat their eggs because I think they lack calcium or something. But the guinea fold eggs have a very hard shell. The chicken cannot break through this. So we've lost more chicken eggs. We've never lost a guinea fold egg to the parts eating. Those are the lessons we've learned over the last uh, 12 months of farming. We've made mistakes, sure. But then we are proud of ourselves that we made some progress. We've been able to raise uh, turkeys that we never raised before. We have raised ducks. We have been raised guinea fowl on the farm. So this year we plan to do proper housing and actually deal with all the lessons we've learned to make sure it's a proper farm. Uh, so thank you very much for watching. Please be with us for this year. Uh, subscribe, watch our videos and share. And we'll keep on, we'll keep on sharing as much with you as we can. So, yes, thank you.